Today, I'm excited to welcome back David Lewis. David is a San Francisco writer, filmmaker. David, welcome back. It is great to be back. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. I mean, you have a new film every, almost feel like every five months. <laughs> I wish, I wish. It, it seems like uh, there's been a steady um, flow of them. It's been every two years. And so that's kind of our game plan. And Longhorns is the latest. How exciting. Uh, I have seen, I was there on opening night in the mm. Castro Theater here in San Francisco. Always a thrill. The, the reaction was quite amazing. Yeah, we were just like bowled over by how great the audience was, you know, because it was the first time the film was being shown. Mm -hmm. And you never know with a comedy what, how the reaction is going to be, you know. And so just the sheer laughter from beginning to end. Um, there's nothing like a frame line audience in San mm -hmm. Francisco. Uh, so it was a great way to start the film. So, uh, and you have it right on the Saturday of the Pride mm -hmm. Week here. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, um, from uh, Frameline decided to put it there, which was great. So, you know, the city is really has a huge energy, you know, during that weekend, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it was a world premiere of the film. And so you put all that together and it was really, ex we had the cast and crew there and lots mm -hmm. of friends and... You know, it's just a great experience. You can't trade that for anything. And that was kind of the kickoff for, you know, a six-month festival tour uh, with the film. That's uh, The North American tour is pretty much completed now that it's coming out on DVD. But mm -hmm. it was a thrill. We had really a lot of fun making this film and a lot of fun taking it to filmgoers. And, you know, um, it's, it's an experience I wouldn't trade. So let's talk about the film. Okay. Uh, so you've gone from Redwoods, mm -hmm. which is a very beautiful, cinematic, romantic story. Oh, thank you. To Longhorns, which is has a comedy elements. Are you going back to your root, back to where you make that under one roof? You know, it's funny because a lot of people who are familiar with Rock Haven and Redwoods aren't familiar with Under One Roof. And so it's quite a shock to mm -hmm. some people who have seen my earlier work when they saw Longhorns because it's such a departure. You know, right, it's right. a sex comedy. It has romantic elements. I think Longhorns still has a lot of heart at the end of the day, but, you know, there's still, like, crazy actions going left and right and pretty salty dialogue and mm -hmm. sexual situations. But, like... Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I think I needed a comedy after Redwood. As much as I loved Redwoods and Rock Haven, I always will. But like, I thought a comedy was a good thing. So, uh, from Under One Roof to Rock Havens, uh, you know, if I if I don't know the name, I probably think that it's a two person making that movie because he has gone from uh, the production value is almost a no comparison. You know, a large part of that is just working with great people. I mean, you know, like the cinematographer on Longhorns, uh, Fraser Bradshaw, is... What inspire Longhorns? You know, Is like, it your personal story? I wish my life was so exciting as Longhorns, you know. Though there are personal things in the story, and there are personal things with the characters, like with every work I do. But, like, mm -hmm. I you know, went to college during uh, the, the 1980s. And so, and then my family lives in Texas. So when they speak the Texas accent and the whole nine yards, I'm not from Texas, but my mm. family lives there. And so it's a great arena. And so I guess it just kind of, I wanted to do something about college, those kind of times where I was figuring out who I was, and mm -hmm. I thought there was a lot of comedy in that, and so that's where that started. But you know, I mean, I, I, I can relate to that. I mean, even now, uh, being gay is much more accepted, and, but however, you know, people still having a hard time of dealing with their sexuality, especially at that young, tender age. So, uh, so what prompted this, this theme? Just wake up one day that I decided to... You know, it's like the themes kind of emerge as you write. And so sometimes when I first start mm. a project, I don't even 
know why I'm writing it. And that's almost one of the biggest things that happens during a project and when I'm writing a script that goes through 20 drafts is like you start to figure out why you're doing this. And mm -hmm. so like, and I think it was that time of um, finding out who you were. Um, I think there was part of me that has always been um, attracted to this. I think all of us have had mm -hmm. like a crush on a straight person before mm -hmm. and, and figuring out all of this and, um, and, and having straight friends and going through this. It's just part of growing up and finding mm -hmm. out who you are. And, and it could also be when you were 20, you just simply horny. That's for sure. That's all we <laughs> talked about in college is sex, sex, sex. I mean, and it was like we were like, had one thing on the mind 24 7. And it mm -hmm. was like, and so I talk the talk like everyone else, you know, in school. I mean, particularly when you have guys together and it was mm -hmm. just sex, sex, sex. And, you know, I was still figuring out who I was. And I was getting a sense that I had an attraction to men, but like mm -hmm. I, it, it took a while for me to process all that. And it's not, a lot of times it is a process. And, and the main character of Kevin and Longhorns, you know, is going through a process of Jim. figuring out who he is. And I don't try to define who he is. I mean, you know, like it's, and you, you're going to have to make up your own mind where all these characters are on the sexual, you know, chain, so to speak, you know, because like it's open to interpretation. And, you know, like mm -hmm. and I think that's why I think there are several reasons this film has resonance. I think that's one. I mean, it's just sexuality is a mm -hmm. fluid thing. And it, you know, we kind of have fun with that. We try to poke fun of that a little bit and the whole straight kind of guy and and trust me like when straight people have seen this there have been a lot of straight people who've like come out with their little experiences <laughs> of porn and everything because like uh -huh. it's natural it's not that they're gay it's just that they go through these kind of life mm. experiences and i think from that standpoint it has a lot of universality in the film so the story's backdrop took place in 1982 mm -hmm. in texas mm -hmm. So how much of the story is based on your personal experience versus how much research you have done to, to bring to this script? You know, there was, there's a lot of each of those things. I mean, mm. there's, some, there's some moments in the film that are kind of based on my personal events. There are um, the 1980s I could, um, you know, draw on. Though a lot of people on set, the producer, Louis Tice, my incredible art department of Richard Gallo and Corey Weinstein, really had 80s sensibilities. They knew so, they remembered so much details and stuff and brought so much of that to the art design and what have you. And like, that was huge to this film. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like the dorm, the way people talked and the, the Texas talk I was exposed to some, and, mm -hmm. you know, every time I visit my family, which is a lot. Um, but I still did some research into that, too, and how, mm -hmm. and had fun with it. I mean, you know, I don't think your typical Texan talks like some of these folks. I mean, you kind of exaggerate it some and have fun with it. But there still is that truth in how they talk. And I think it's a great arena I, I i love how they talk and i love how they dress and you know it's kind of a country of its own down there and you know like um and when we played this film in texas i was going oh my god <laughs> how are they going to react to this sure. and they were great they were great they i think they really it was a send-up of texas it was meant as a valentine in many respects to texas and so um you know, and my parents were even there at that screening, and so it was, it was really fun. So how did they react? You know, I made sure, like, I stood a little away from my parents because <laughs> there's sexual content in this film. I was way more embarrassed than they were, you know, so, like, mm. they were pretty cool, actually. They, but, but somehow, you know, when, like, there's a couple of scenes where I'm just going... You know, I really don't need to be next to my father right now watching this. But they were cool. They were great. You know, they, 
and my brother, my very straight brother, and my very straight nephews and nieces. I mean, they were all there. They had fun, you know. It's like, I really don't think um, this is just for gay folks. I think gay folks enjoy this, but like mm. straight folks, if they see this, they laugh at this. I mean, you know, because I, as, I, as I said, there's a lot of universal experiences that these guys go through that whether straight people want to admit it or not all the time, <laughs> that they go through, you know. So it's a very human thing that it probably happened to a lot of people. I think so. You know, we had a test screening and, you know, mm. someone, you know, asked me, they go, well, would this guy really be playing porn with his straight friends and all of this? And I kind of, I go, well, let me address the audience. And I mm. addressed the test audience members and two thirds of them raised their hands and said, yeah, we've had experiences like this. And, you know, like, and I don't think it's ever really been captured on film like this. And so it's certainly um, straight guys sharing porn is a theme of, uh, not a theme, but, you know, kind of a, certainly one of the big undercurrents of this film. And it's all over the place that happens out there, but we just don't talk about it. So how long did it take you to write this script? This script was written in about uh, about a year and had about 20 drafts. And so mm -hmm. I wrote the first draft like in two weeks, which is really unusually quick. I see. And then, but it just, of course, needed refinement and it changed an awful lot. Mm -hmm. You know, up until filming and during filming, it changed, you know, because once you get the actors on board and what have you, mm -hmm. They bring amazing things, and you know, and and you talk to a lot. I, I tend to show my work to a lot of people and mm -hmm. get, you know, feedback and themes emerge from their comments, and you put it together. But like, but yeah, it's a typical thing. It's about twenty drafts and about a year of time. So let's talk about the casting. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind that you need someone young, college mm -hmm. A, mm -hmm. and with a Texas accent. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, how did that casting? It was tough, you know, because like, and not only for the reasons you described, but like, this had like sexual content, mm -hmm. and you needed people, you needed actors who could bring out the emotional elements of these characters and make us care about mm -hmm. these kids. And so like, so you needed game actors who were brave, and you needed, and they had to be good, and mm -hmm. and... And they were all Southern. Most of the actors, you know, were Southern. And that was just a lucky coincidence. I, see, I, see. I mean, so, you know, I so think that certainly helped. So their accent, uh, natural. Well, I mean, they played around some. I mean, sure. they had Texas accents, but at least they were starting out from a Southern accent because mm -hmm. they're from different parts of the South. And, and there's no just one Texas accent. There's like, there's a variety of Texas accents even. But like, mm -hmm. but... And it's not just the accent, but the way of comporting yourself, you know, that's mm -hmm. Southern and, you know, but they had to bring their, they brought their own things too. But like, but yeah, finding all of these actors who understood what we were trying to do mm -hmm. and could bring things to their characters, it was not easy to find uh, these folks. And we spent a lot of time on casting and we're rewarded for it because we really had good people. Mm -hmm.